Tony and Mel, thanks for this opportunity to bring the word. It's because they really felt that God laid it on their hearts that I should share this morning that I had to step in and be obedient. So, Father, I thank you this morning for the honor and the privilege of bringing your word. And Father God, I thank you this morning that the anointing is on your word, my God. And Lord, we look to you this morning to break open your word, Father God. Father, I pray this morning that your word will be like a two-edged sword that divides between soul and spirit, between bone and marrow, between thoughts, intentions, and motives of hearts this morning, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of God that is upon our lives. Yes. That song that we sang this morning, that he uses the weak to lead the strong and that his grace is sufficient, I am standing on that word. It's been such a delightful time just to be with you. My heart is always encouraged and stirred when we get together as sons and daughters of the Most High God and we can just enjoy one another. But then we've got to get the preaching out of the way so we can come and have coffee again and just catch up. Okay, so I'm going to try and get there. Greg, I really just enjoyed your word yesterday and when you said that it's time, there was just something that stirred in my heart and I really just embraced that. I know that that is what the Spirit of God is saying, that we are living in such a vital time on the earth right now, and it, it doesn't take a lot of spiritual discernment to know that things are shifting and that things are moving. I think even people that are in the world that haven't got the Spirit of God to take them and lead them into things to come knows that something is up. There's just such a sense of anticipation. And um, as the children of God, we know that God speaks to us first and He shows us things to come. And, you know, we, we, we're just living in such extraordinary times. And when we switch on the morning news and we switch on the evening news, such a lot transpires in that little bit of time. And that determines very often how we feel about things, whether we're filled with fear and whether we're filled with faith and with hope and with anticipation that God is a good God and whatever God has got in store for us, it's going to be good and the outcome is going to be good. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, it says, besides this, you know what a critical hour this is. How it's high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep. Rouse to reality. My friend, it's time to rouse to reality. For salvation, final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on Christ the Messiah. It's time to wake up to reality. And I just love that scripture in Isaiah chapter 60 that says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen up on you. It's such a personal word for us because God says it's not out there. It's not distance. It's, it's, it's right here. God says, Arise and shine for your light. It's your appointed time. It's our appointed time as the church. It's our appointed time as the sons and daughters of God. But you know what? We've always got a choice whether we're going to come to the party or not. And when God has got something out there for us, God still respects our free will in whether we're going to, we're going to listen to the Spirit of God and whether we're going to adhere to what God is saying to us and, and do what God tells us to do. So it's a deeply personal time. God says his glory is going to arise on you. It's a time of appointment. God has got an appointed time for us. God doesn't just have an appointed time for us. God says, I have appointed you and I have enabled you for such a time as this. But there's a word of caution in this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11b, it says, Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he outwit you. And my friend, when there's an appointment, there's also a disappointment. And the enemy wants to turn your appointed time, he wants to turn your appointment into a disappointment. How many of you know that, that there's times in our lives that we feel just so, you know, as if we've heard from God personally? And we step out, like Peter did, he stepped out of the boat, and guess what happened? He took a tree, he took a tree, he took a step or two, and then he started to sink the moment that he took his eyes off God. And I can remember so clearly, you know, when I came to God, I just had such a revelation of who God was that I believed in the goodness and the grace and the glory of God to the extent that I thought nothing would ever go wrong in my life again. 
I really believe that the favor of God and the anointing of God was on my life to the extent that from now on things will just keep on going right. And guess what? I was set up for disappointment. The appointment, the anointing, the, 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 the commissioning of God on my life had to go through tests and trials in order for the character to develop so that I could be of any use to God. I had to come to the end of myself and know that there's nothing within me, that I can do nothing that I can offer Him that will make any difference unless He breathes on my life and unless He enables me and, and empowers me to do even what He's called me to do. Very often I say to God, God, you know, you've got, such, you've got such a wonderful kingdom and you've got such wonderful people. And there's so many people that so want to do this. And, and I love you with all my heart, but can't you just find somebody else to do this thing? Because they're going to say it better. They're going to do it better. And it was like Moses said. He said, God, you know, I stutter. And God kept on saying, but I will make a way. I'll give you an air on and I will touch your mouth and I will make a way where there seems to be no way. And you know, I know that we qualify, I qualify, because the Word of God says that God delights to choose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And when God looked at my life and when God looked at our lives, He found two very foolish things. And He knew that if He could use our lives, people would know it's got nothing to do with us, but it's got everything to do with the grace of God. And that is what God wants to encourage you in. You know, I really believe that at this vital time that we're standing in, that God is, is anointing and that God is appointing and that God is setting us up for His purposes and for His glory in His kingdom to, to play such vital roles. And you can underestimate who you are, but don't ever underestimate who He is in and through your life. Okay, so we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices and the word of God says that Jesus came to give us life and give us life in abundance. But the enemy's agenda, my friend, has never changed over the years. The enemy's agenda is still to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he will use whatever means he can to get that done. Now, as I said, this appointed time that we're living in, this vital time, this high time, this kairos time, that, we leave, that we're living in, this, this time that God has appointed you and, and put everything together in order to position you to accomplish that which he's called you for, the enemy wants to disappoint you in your appointed time. Now that, that dis is a prefix and it means this, to go into the opposite direction. To go into the opposite direction. You know, when you, when you really like somebody, if you put the dis in front of it, it says dislike. When there's unity and God commands a blessing, if you put the dis in front of it, it's disunity. When we function according to that which God has placed within us for his glory and for his honor, and the enemy comes in and he puts a dis in front of it, we become dysfunctional. And the enemy would do everything in his power to derail us from that which God has got for us. So I need to say this very clearly, that disappointment is not from God. Amen. God will never, ever disappoint you. But my friend, disappointment, unfortunately, is a very real part of life. We set ourselves up if we think that we're never, ever going to be disappointed. God appoints us. If we look at Jeremiah um, chapter 1, let's just go there, Jeremiah chapter 1. <coughs> And I'm going to read from verse 1. Let's read from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Therefore I said, O oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm only a youth. I used that one before. Have you used it? Now I can't say I'm only a youth. I've just got to get on with the job. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I'm only a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, their faces. 
for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And then he carries on and he says, what he sees. And then the Lord says to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active and watching over my word to perform it. When God appoints you, he gives you a position, he gives you the authority, he gives you the assignment, and he gives you your kingdom purpose. Now, the most amazing thing is if you read through the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was called to bring the word of the Lord very specifically. And Jeremiah was called to bring the word of the Lord to the kings and to the people of God. Now, our, our um, title and our, our theme for this time is the kings are coming. And you know what? We get so impressed with the kings that are coming. But the wonderful thing that we, that we, that we often overlook is that the king has already come. And he is here. And the kings that are coming is just actually a byproduct of the king that is already here. And so often we get so impressed with the kings that are coming. And you know what? The kings that are coming have got their own agendas. The kings are rulers and the kings are, are people of authority in their sphere of influence. And they rule and they reign in their area. And when they see the glory of the Lord that has risen upon you, they come, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. They see that something is working, and guess what? They want it. But they don't want you. They want it. And if we get confused with what they want and what we've got to give them, my friend, we're in deep trouble. Because let me tell you something, the kings will use you, and the kings will abuse you, and the kings will take what is yours and make it their own. And the moment that you say something that they don't want to hear, guess what their reaction will be? And we find that in the book of Jeremiah, that Jeremiah learned that the hard way. And somehow Jeremiah was a prophet because God anointed him and God put his spirit within him and God caused him to see that which is not and to call it as if it is. And God allowed him to see things. And so when God said, Jeremiah, you're appointed and you're anointed, guess what Jeremiah saw? He saw the day that he would go into the courts of the Lord and prophesy the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord was not what the king of the day wanted to hear. And guess what? He went into the house of the Lord and he prophesied the word of the Lord. You read that in Jeremiah chapter 20. And he prophesied the word of the Lord and what happened was the religious people of the day came and they said, we don't like what you're saying. You're out of line, Jeremiah. Go and rethink what you've said, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah got so disappointed, disappointed, that he had to look back into Jeremiah chapter 1. If he could read the book, it would have really have helped him. But he had to recall what God had said to him, that I have anointed you and I have appointed you, and I have not anointed you and appointed you so that you can go into meetings and have nice words for people and say, God will bless you, my friend, and God will prosper you, and that husband that you're believing for, God is going to bring that man, and everything is going to go well, and your business will fly, and you will fly, and the kings will come to you to see what you are doing so that they can take it and make this world a better place. No, he anointed Jeremiah and he gave him a word that was unpopular. And at times God anoints us and we stand in the house of the Lord and we say that which we cannot contain, which we cannot hold in because the spirit of the Lord is upon us and we cannot hold it in. We become weary of holding it in and we've got to say it. And when we say it, people don't stand up and say, Hallelujah. People stand up and they say, put him in stocks, put him in bonds. And we're not talking about the stock exchange, my friend. We're talking about the fact that they put you in stocks and they put you in bonds and they tell you, get out of the house of the Lord. We do not believe that what you are saying is the word of the Lord because God is a good God. God will bless us. 
God is so good. The favor of God is upon us, and the favor of God is upon us. But the favor of God is not upon us for us. The favor of God is upon us for Him. The favor of God is upon us so that we can speak the word of the Lord, the Lord with boldness, with confidence, fearlessly and courageously, with utmost courage, in order to bring to pass that which God has said and not what man has said. And you know, there's been times in our lives that we had to stand up and say what the word of the Lord is saying. And then people say, how can you say that? You are being unkind. But if the word of the Lord is burning inside of you, you've got no option but to say what God is saying. And it's a time to arise and it's a time to stand because the king has already come and we fear him. We do not fear the kings that are coming because we know, my friend, that they're coming with an agenda. And the agenda is not to bring what they've got to bless us, to build us, to enlarge our territory. But they're coming in order to receive the glory of the Lord because it's such a dark world out there. The word of God says in Isaiah, it says, arise. That word arise means to get up, to stand up, to be counted, to emerge, to come to the table, to get out of your bed, to get out of your circumstances, to step up to the plate, because you cannot be in a place where God wants to accomplish things through you if you don't rock up. So the first thing that he says is, he says, arise. And then he says, shine. And in order for us to shine, the light of God needs to penetrate us. And we've got to get rid of everything within us that doesn't glorify God. Everything within us that does not bring and promote the glory and the kingdom of God. You know, in order for us to shine, sometimes there's a bit of rubbing that needs to take place. If I want to shine my shoes, I've got to rub it a little bit. And there's rubbing. The Word of God says this, iron sharpens iron. So the countenance of one will sharpen the countenance of another. And there's times in our lives that we get rubbed. Circumstances come against us. Situations come against us. The Word of God says this. It says, arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise and get up, show up from the depression, the severe despondency, the feelings of hopelessness and inadequacy that has kept you in that prostrate place. It says, arise from the prostration and depression in which circumstances have kept you. The Latin word for for circumstances is the word encircle. And there are so many things in our lives that encircle us, that causes us just to see that which is around us and not to get the kingdom perspective of what God wants to do in this time and in this hour. We get so encircled by our emotions. My friend, we get so encircled by our inadequacies, by our feelings of hopelessness, by our feelings of despair, by our, our feelings of, of extreme exhaustion and mental burnout that we cannot even think of crossing the street, never mind taking the word of God and, and, and being appointed and speaking forth the word of God. And God says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen up on you. Do not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. He wants to disappoint you. He wants to dis locate you. Make sure that you are aligned in the kingdom. Make sure that your first alignment is with your father, with your father's voice. Make sure that you do not get despondent and that you do not get overwhelmed and that you do not get so disappointed because of people's faces, because of people's reactions. I know there was a time in my life what, that, that, that God said to us that we've got to declare certain things in the house of the Lord. And guess what? There wasn't a bit of applause. People came and said, who do you think you are? to declare that God has called you apostolically? Who do you think you are to declare that you will be a resource church? Who do you think you are? Because God hasn't anointed and appointed you. The anointing and appointing is there. And then at that time, you've got to fear God more, my friend, than you fear man. You've got to stand up and say what God is saying, even though you know, and especially because you know that there's no good within you, and that the only way that God is going to do this thing is God actually does it. And so we, 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 we are his bond slaves. We belong to him. And whatever he says, we've got to speak. 
And you know what? When Jeremiah knew what God wanted him to speak, he knew what the outcome would be. And that is why I said to God, no ways. I'm not going to do this. And there's been times in my life that I said to God, no ways. I'm not going to do this. Because I knew what the outcome would be. But my friend, throughout the word of God, the glory of God is the, is the, is the, um, the thread that goes through from, generate, from, from Genesis to Revelation. The Word of God says this, it says in Romans chapter 11, verse 36. For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. For all things originate with Him and come from Him and center in and tend to consummate and to end in him. To him be the glory forever. Amen. So the kings are coming, ready or not. It's better to be ready. It's better to know that God says, it's your time. It's your appointed time. He speaks so tenderly to us. He says, come on, my child, get out of bed. That word that Marilyn read the other night in the message. Turn your face to the sunshine. Know that there's no way that you can do this. But know that I delight to show myself strong on on your behalf. As we arise and as we shine, as we become bright with his reflected light because we've dealt with the things within us that has opposed the kingdom of God, because we've dealt with the things within us that God has shown us that is not pleasing to him. His light can be reflected in and on and through our lives, and we can be switched on to the purposes of God. We can be switched on to that which God has got for our lives, because it's not about us. There was a time King Hezekiah just went through a tremendous um, battle in his life, and he had this sick bed that he came out of, and he was actually going to die. And then the prophet came to him and said, you're going to live. And you know what? This, this king was so excited that he was going to live that he lost perspective. And the next thing that happened was there was a convoy from the kings of Babylon that came, and they came into his, into his, into his castle, into his palace. And it said they came with letters, and they came with gifts. And know this today, that when the kings are coming, Greg, they come with letters. And they come with gifts. And they come because what they want is something that you've got. And in order for you to give them what God wants you to give them, you've got to step out out of the way and allow the glory of the Lord to shine in and through your life. And not to get impressed with yourself. And not to, not to get to a place of believing your own publicity. And Hezekiah was just so relieved that he actually made the cut and that he was actually going to live. When these people came and they brought the letter to say how wonderful he was and that all these people wanted to align with him and that there was great days ahead for his kingdom, he became so impressed. And when he looked at the gifts, his reaction was this. He took them into his storehouse and he took them into his treasury And the word of the Lord says this, he showed them everything that he had. He showed them his spices. He showed them his oil, his anointing. He showed them his silver, the bucks that he had. He showed them his gold, his glory. And he showed them his armory. And he had a fantastic time in telling these kings that were coming to him what he had and how impressive it was how good God has been to him. And everything that is in this palace and everything that is in this kingdom is by the good and the glory of God. How wonderful was that? Was there anything wrong with that? He overstepped the line in the spirit because he didn't heed and listen to the spirit of God. So he showed them everything that he had. And then the prophet came to him and he said to him, he said, Hezekiah, who were those people? And he said, oh, they were the kings from Babylon, and they came. And he said, and what did you do? He said, I showed them everything. And he said this to him, he said, because you did that, because you took them into areas where I did not want you to take them into, because you took them into my treasury 
and showed them the anointing, the weapons, everything that you've got will be stripped from you. Everything. And Hezekiah said this. He was a man that lived for the moment and a man that lived for his own glory. He said, when will this happen? And the prophet said to him, not in your lifetime. He said, but they will come and take your sons and they will make them eunuchs. They will, they will make them unfruitful. And Hezekiah said, it's okay. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. And so, my friend, it's not about us. When the kings come and you think it's about you, you've lost the plot already. It's about the king of kings. And the only thing of value and worth that we've got to show the world and that we have to show the world is his glory, his honor, for, for through him and in him and by him comes his glory. And we need to return his glory to him. And so my prayer for you this morning is that you will arise and that you will shine because this is your appointed time. That you will not allow the enemy to diss you, to take you into a direction that God has not called you to walk into. That you will be fruitful in your generation and in generations to come so that his kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven. Let's just stand this morning. Good work. So, Father, we, we thank you this morning that as your word went forth, Father God, that it divided yes, between soul and spirit, between bone and marrow. And, Father God, I pray this morning that we will not become yes. offended yes. with your word because it doesn't say what we wanted to say, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray this morning that we will declare your word because it's your word and that you back up your word, Father God, that you watch over your word to perform it. And, Father, I pray for each and every one of your precious sons and daughters this morning who the enemy turned the appointment into a disappointment. Lord, I pray right now just for an alignment in the spirit with your original appointment and with your original intent for each and every life, Father God. And Lord, I pray today that that which the enemy meant for evil and destruction, that you will turn it around this day, Father God. We turn around into your appointed time, into your vital time, into your high time, Father God. And I pray that you turn that disappointment right now into appointment with you in Jesus' name. And all God's beautiful people said, Amen. Amen.